supreme grace of heavenly repose. Lord, fill me now with this heavenly blessing. Lord, fill me now with this heavenly blessing. To this pulsing and become myself. We have gathered once again in the presence of the living Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the humanity, God who has shown his love in the person of Jesus Christ on the cross, continues to love us, continues to draw us all together unto himself once again in the presence of the most blessed sacrament the sacrament of the presence of Jesus our Lord Jesus our Redeemer the Messiah the Son sent by the Father the bread that came down from heaven the living bread the bread that continues to feed Feed his sheep, feed his believers, feed his people. We thank Lord once again in your presence. In adoration we kneel before you. We pray in your presence, extraordinary presence of the living God and Son Jesus Christ among us. For our reflection today, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear children and my dear young generation, we take the reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 1, verses 20 to 22. A letter that Paul writes, to the church in Rome in advance before he would visit. He has not been there. He has not visited the church and he has neither founded the church in Rome. But his heart's desire is to visit Rome to share that good news of Jesus the risen Lord. He sees a very profound and extraordinary relationship between Jerusalem and Rome. In fact, today, what we experience, what we see in the church, it is exactly what St. Paul was able to perceive, a relationship 
between the church in Jerusalem and the, in the church in Rome. And Paul is trying to tell them about their faith, not to be misled and misguided by the authority, the public worship promulgated by the emperor, but to be faithful to the Lord, but to be faithful to what they have been able to receive, what they were able to hear about the good news of our Lord. Paul says to them, it is a letter in which he's asking the people, the believer to set his heart and soul, the body upon the teaching of Christ, not to allow the evil powers to overtake them. And the radiant goes to tell us, chapter two, 1, verses 20 to 22. St. Paul says, and he writes, Ever since God created the world, His invisible qualities, both His eternal power and His divine nature, have been clearly seen. They are perceived in the things that God has made. So those people have no excuse at all. They know God, but they do not give Him the honor that belongs to Him. No, do they thank Him. Instead, their thoughts have become complete nonsense and their empty minds are filled with darkness. They saw they were wise and they say they are wise, but they are fools. Instead of worshipping the mortal God, they worship images made to look like mortal man or birds or animals or reptiles. This is the word of the God. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear children, my dear young generation, St. Paul's word is the word that comes from God. As Paul was inspired to share the depth of an experience, he says to us that the people cannot excuse themselves from the presence of God in their life when they look at the nature and the whole history of humanity. Therefore, God's revelation is first and foremost, it is a revelation in the creation and it is a revelation in history. And what we see today in our presence in the Blessed Sacrament is that summing up, is the culmination, is the summit of the revelation of God's love in creation and in humanity. God continues to reveal himself today once again in the living presence of his son in the blessed sacrament in the Holy Eucharist. We cannot see him. We cannot receive him when we are overtaken by our own egoism, by our own selfish ways of wisdom and reasoning out. We cannot touch him because our hands are poisoned. We cannot see him because our eyes are blind. We cannot perceive because our minds are darkened by your own ideologies, by your own perceptions, by our own measures, and by our own decisions, by the wisdom that we think that we can have out of God, without God. 
Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Augustine says, God, to come to you, to go away from you, is to fall, is to fall in our life. But to come towards you is to experience the resurrection. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us sing to the Lord. Let us open our hearts and minds in singing to Him, opening our hearts to be touched by His power, to widen our horizons, to open our minds and our hearts to see Him, to experience Him in His creation, in the history of humanity, in our own history, and who is present before our eyes in the Blessed Sacrament. Because He is alive. He is alive. He is living. Yes, Lord. In the words of the psalmist of the Psalm 111, we thank and we praise you today with all my heart. I thank you, Lord, in the assembly of his faithful and his people. How wonderful are the things that you do. All who are delighted with them want to understand them. All that you do is full of honor and majesty. You are righteousness and your righteousness is eternal, Lord. And you are in fact indeed righteous Lord do not let us forget your wonderful actions you are kind and merciful 
you provide food for those who who honor you you never forget your covenant we know that you have shown your power to us your people by giving us the lands the wealth in the sacraments given us your presence in this most holy sacrament of the altar in all that you do lord you are faithful and just all your commands are depend dependable yes lord we thank you and we honor you today we bless you we glorify you on earth we thank you for being with us that you bless us that you enlighten our hearts that you fill us with your light with your love and with your grace Mysteria venerari Od redemptionis sue fructum in nobis iuditur essentiamus, quae vivis et regnas in saecula saeculorum. 